complex difficulties in the aerospace supply chain are still causing headaches for industry leaders who are struggling to fulfill their commitments to customers and partners. Whether due to workforce shortages, regional conflicts, or lack of raw materials, businesses are having to adapt and innovate. AIN brought together four senior executives from distributor FDH Aero, maintenance repair and overhaul provider Standard Aero, Aerostructures manufacturer GKN Aerospace, and consultants Aerodynamic Advisory to share their wisdom. The discussion was sponsored by FDH Aero. Some of the roots of these problems go back to before COVID, but the fallout from the pandemic is still all too real. I'll give you three kind of phases of what I experienced. The first was this before COVID, this <clears throat> this uh, partnering for success. If you remember the the Boeing environment, where it was let's let's really put the thumbs you know or, or screws, if you will, to everybody we can to get costs down. People were trying desperately to to become a much more affordable manufacturer. And what they found was that that actually had the opposite effect. It, it really compromised quality. It, it compromised a lot of different things. And then COVID hit, um, which then created another shift. And now it was about availability. Um, and then after COVID, what what I see happening is the, the premium now is not around cost. It's not around availability. It, it's actually full circle. It's around quality. Right? Are you a reliable quality supplier? And people will pay a premium for that um, versus before where it was a constant battle to, to find a low cost solution or low cost geography or whatever it may be, or you know, second source, of whatever. To keep aircraft, engines, and components in commercial service, companies are having to get more inventive. I think in recent um, months, I think we're seeing some stabilization. But if you look back to that period, before COVID and then after COVID to today, I think the, the growth in volumes, and by volumes, I mean the, the volumes of aircraft produced by the OEMs, by Airbus and Boeing, and, and, and in defence programmes as well, that grew quite steadily over many years and, and decades. So the ramp up was incremental year by year and got to some some record volumes pre-COVID. So a lot of OEMs were at record volumes pre-COVID, uh, went to almost zero, and then recovered back, not quite to those record volumes, but recovered back at a pace that was multiples faster than they'd ever ramped up in the first instance. So I think it was the speed of the ramp up post-COVID that put incredible stress on a supply chain, and one that during COVID had had challenges in terms of you know, deferred investment, people leaving the workforce. So a storm, a perfect storm in terms of an unprecedented speed of ramp up with a supply chain that had been weakened by what had happened during COVID. Things have also sort of evolved where, uh, you know, you, you look to diversify your supply base, uh, you look to um, digitize your supply chain. And so, you know, some 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 things have been uh, some positive things have been accelerated. What we do to manage through the supply chain is, uh, you know, d differently or maybe not differently, but in greater doses is um, the use of repairs. So instead of buying new parts from suppliers, uh, we look to repair uh, parts and make them serviceable again. Um, we've done that by building up our capability, both through organic and inorganic investment. And then we also uh, seek to utilize as much used serviceable material as possible as well, uh, just to supplement, you know, any any supply chain uh, disruptions that that we see on particular parts. And there's there's typically good uh, economics associated that with that as well for both uh, Standard Aero and customers. The supply chain issues expected to continue. Aircraft fleets will get older, and that could further increase the pressure. You know, we don't expect aircraft production to get back to pre-COVID levels until about 2028. So, you know, meanwhile, air travel demand is back above 2019 levels. So you have this, you know, gap in air travel demand versus supply of aircraft. So with an older fleet sticking around, that means 
more maintenance or events going into older legacy fleets like the you know, 737NG or A320CO, 777s and so on. And um, I'd say we're, we're still not out of the woods yet. There's still, I'd say, a lot of more downside risk that things continue to slip to the right. Achieving the higher level of resilience now required to survive and thrive in aerospace is very much a collaborative effort. We're, we're effectively trying to get closer with a lot of our key suppliers. And I think the, the thing, too, that is a natural forcing function for, for folks like us is you can't be everything to everybody. You really got to focus on certain families of parts, things that, that we feel are the right parts in terms of how we like to source and distribute. And then the, the other part of it, obviously, and again, this is not abnormal, is to get closer with our customers on understanding their needs and wants and how predictive they can be in their, in their schedules. Military conflicts such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine, have created exceptional pinch points, especially around the supply of key raw materials. With titanium, for example, that before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, that you know Russia is a major source of titanium, um, as well as some key processes like uh, large press uh, forgings. And you know, back in 2014, when Russia invaded Crimea, Boeing had moved away from Russia as a source of titanium and had stockpiled a lot, but other OEMs hadn't. So, you know, there's still, they're still a lot of reliance on, on that source of material. And, you know, now there's concerns about rare earths because of trade wars and with China. And the castings and forgings are, are still a, an issue. Uh, forgings, we think, could be a, you know, unless there's more forging capacity added, uh, we think that could be a barrier to significantly raising aircraft production rates. And, um, you know, again, with the on ongoing geopolitical um, tensions and uncertainty, you know, you, you would imagine that, well, if certain capacities come offline or can't be used anymore because of geopolitics, then others would invest in new capacity, and that hasn't been the case. But as if all these challenges weren't enough, the U.S. government's tariffs have introduced unforeseen complexity that's proving very hard to manage. We don't see tariffs as a positive thing. We see it as something that makes a, the supply chain more complex, um, adds complexity, adds administration to how the supply chain works. And that situation has... The, the rate of change has slowed in recent weeks um, from a point when things were changing daily. However, if we end up with a situation where you've got going into the US broadly 10% tariffs, that's not a positive outcome, I don't think, in terms of the additional level of, of cost and complexity that adds. I mean, we're, we're assessing the challenges, we're working out ways to mitigate them, and we're, we can see a way through to to mitigate a lot of the challenges of tariffs, but it, it adds, um, at the moment, it's adding an administrative burden, um, I think is the biggest, you know, how we deal with export control, um, which was something that was working in terms of, you know, we move parts globally, we knew how to move parts globally. Now we're doing that, but we're having to, there's another level of uh, documentation that's required if you want to then recover tariffs through a sort of drawdown process. So there's there's, a, there's an extra layer of complexity there that I don't think benefits anyone. Well, if you want all the details of this insightful exchange of first-hand knowledge on the state of the aerospace supply chain, you'll find that in AIN's June edition. And if you're not a subscriber to this print publication, well, you can access it all at AINonline.com. And thank you for watching.